Welcome back to coverage of the new Capenna Championship. I'm Ailey Loney alongside Corey Baumeister, and oh boy, are we very close to putting more people into the World Championship. Our next feature match may do just that, Corey. Tell us about this one coming up. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a big one here for Tristan Wallaroo. A win here for Tristan is locking it up for the World Championship here with that Jeskai Storm deck that we just saw. A few minor changes once again, but for the most part, really the same list. Up against Corey Burkhardt, uh, who's just having a great year as well, playing S for mid-range. So uh, I know, uh, I know uh, Tristan took down a nice lengthy game one as we join in for game number two. So he is just one game win away from locking up his world championship slot. That has got to feel amazeballs. But up against the big bad of this weekend in Esper Midrange. Now, Corey, this matchup, it hasn't really been as clear cut as we would have liked to see. You know, we don't see Storm just absolutely crushing it. Esper is having a bit of an iffy weekend altogether so far. But what do you think we're going to see in this match? Exactly. A lot of the Esper people that I was talking to, uh, you know, leading into this event felt pretty good about their matchup against Goldspan Dragon. Just the fact that you get to have duresses for the big score and the unexpected windfalls. You get to have Disdainful Stroke and Infernal Grass to be clean answers for the Dragon and Leer. There's a lot of great answers, but you have to draw them in kind of the right order up against these Dragon decks. And that's why maybe Jeskai Storm is actually doing pretty okay against this deck. Because Jeskai Storm is a very linear combo deck that does kind of the same thing over and over again. It doesn't have to have its threats line up that well. It just has to see a Goldspan Dragon at some point. And that's really the only <laughs> thing you need to be doing. And that's not so hard to do when you draw basically your whole deck every game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as we saw in the last game with uh, David Inglis. But let's see how this goes here. We've got two creatures on the battlefield right now, pressuring the life total. Spikefield Hazard will take care of one of these Null Priests of Oblivion from Corey Burkhart, who draws Rafine's Tower. Now, four mana, go! That's the most suspicious thing you can see from a blue player, especially these Esper dudes as they are rocking the Wandering Emperor and Obscura Interceptor. So Tristan yeah. will know to be wary of one of those. And that's the pinch. It's so hard to play around both of those cards because they do such wildly different things that, you know, it, it's pretty tricky. And now we're even seeing Corey kind of pause, maybe trying to cast this now just in case there's a Jwari disruption. Pretty heads up play mm -hmm. there from Corey B being able to uh, recognize there is a Jwari disruption. Uh, and that's a lot of pressure against this yeah. is it deck but it is opening the doors to unexpected windfall or to big score Corey just uh has evaluated that he doesn't care about that risk yeah it's 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 a bit of a difficult consideration i guess it's like okay am i gonna be defensive and try and stop what they're doing or do i care more about my game plan and just killing them as quick as i can because the longer Corey gives tristan the more answers and you know resources he has to work with Yep, 100%. You can really look at these Esper mid-range decks in this matchup as kind of the tempo player. They want to close the game as fast as possible because what Tristan's doing and every Jeskai Storm deck in this tournament is something bigger than every other deck. They have just this yeah. combo finish that does something so overwhelming that all these mid-range decks don't really do. So while mid-range decks yeah. traditionally want to play control role against like other aggressive decks, against combo, they're kind of this tempo aggro deck. And yeah. that's where Rafine really shines because it kind of has that versatility role uh, built within it. Mm. And this Esper deck has been described by a lot of the players playing it as, you know, Obscura Tempo, for example, Esper Tempo. And to me, it feels a lot more like that and less like a control deck. But here we're going to yes. see Obscura Interceptor get this expressive iteration back to hand. Now, Tristan will be able to recast it, but this is exactly what the, what the deck wants to do. Just slow down Tristan to the point that they have control, they have everything they need to deal with whatever they're doing, and they're chipping away at the life total. Yep, totally agree. I think you said that perfectly as far as this being a more aggressive deck. I think if you really want to look for the control deck of the format, as weird as it is, it's Grixis Vampires. You know, that's the most <laughs> controlling deck. It just has that tribal True. theme. So it's kind of tricking everyone that it's not really a control deck. It's a control deck. <laughs> it's a control deck with creatures, though, which I can I can stomach. That's That's fine. 
There you go. There you go. That's up your alley, huh? I mean, come on. Yeah. This is a combo deck with creatures with Jeskai Storm. That's kind of, you know, fitting a similar build. It's got two creatures, maybe three if they cost the Fable. <laughs> I didn't say a lot of creatures, Ailey. I just said creatures. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So Rafine's Tower in hand there to cycle away something, or cycle into something, I should say, as well as the Vanishing Verse, ready mm -hmm. to nab any gold span dragon that could possibly come down. And there's no way to protect it right now from Tristan Wild LaRue. So he's going to keep those dragons in hand, but he's down to nine life now. So he has to yep. pull the trigger on something and soon. Yeah, Tristan really wanted a land there. A land, really any land besides, you know, a Sejiri Step or anything like that to be able to go Galvanic inter Iteration into Unexpected Windfall um, instead of just casting one of these is pretty brutal. But being able to do it now and then picking up Spikefield Hazard, which actually lowers the nice. clock quite a bit by taking up uh, Obscura Interceptor. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Hi. Hi, buddy. What's up, <laughs> Rafine? How you doing? I do like this card, though. He's cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rafine is a great magic card from Streets of New Capenna and just really powerful. And it's it's created this deck. You know, most of the yeah. time this late in standard, you don't get one card that's just going to create a new deck in standard. But yeah. you know, this this along with um, Rafine's land, the Triland um, for Esper has really opened yeah. up a whole new thing. So really cool to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, Rafine is very cool. I mean, what, we're seven yep. sets deep in the standard now. We're all waiting for rotation to, you know, freshen things up a little bit. But yeah. it's great to see that Nuka Pena has had an impact on this format. And just the fact that Esper Midrange is the most played deck this weekend because of Rafine and Obscure yeah. Interceptor and all these conniving, like, Ledger Shredder as well. Yeah, it just shows you how good the quality of the cards are in Nuka Pena. So kudos to the designers. It's one of my designers. favorite sets. Yeah, it's one of my favorite sets in a <laughs> long time. And honestly, though, this being the most played deck, it 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 questions a little bit to me. Like, is this the you know quote unquote the new shiny toy? So that's why so many people gravitate <laughs> into it. Or is it really that good? You know, only the numbers will tell once we see yeah. you know what decks actually had the best win percentage. Uh, and I'm very interested to to see if that's actually the case. Same here, buddy. Goldspan right, Dragon on the, the turn. stack. Vanishing Verse, can you get rid of this Dargon? Let's see. So it's going to target it, and it's going to be on the stack for a very long time, is my prediction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, so what we're probably going to see is at the beginning of the combat, Vanishing Verse, this Goldspan Dragon. That's going to put Tristan up to seven mana. And then mm -hmm. you start with Galvanic Iteration into either Unexpected Windfall or Big Score and evaluate from there. And eventually, if we can find a protection spell for Goldspan Dragon, this game could be over right now. Yeah, so for Tristan, it's do or die time because if these two creatures get to attack, that is potentially two counters on these creatures and that is lethal. But we're going to go dig in. We're going to find something here. Galvanic Iteration on the stack. What can we do? Big score. Let's get some treasures. Let's go dig in. Let's find a counter spell or protection spell Ooh. or removal to get rid of Rafine. Yep, those were not good for what it's worth. I mean, we have a lot more draws at it, but none of those cards keep going, nor protect Goldspan Dragon, nor our show confidence. So we're gonna do four more cards here, but now Tristan has to find something. Otherwise, this is yeah. this is not enough right now. With the Voltage Surge though, he could copy that and sack a treasure, and I think that he gets the four damage and would have enough to pay for Ward. Yes, yep, that is very true as well, but we did find a big score, so here we go again. Spin it, we got another four cards coming. <laughs> and But once again, we're kind of there, you know, like that. this hand is not very good, so we need a few more we're, things. We're doing the dumb stuff. Oh, there we go, so Jury Shelter, that will yeah, protect big one. against that removal spell, so the dragon gets to live, and he can clean off these two creatures as well if he wants to, because boy, does he certainly have the mana to do so. Yep, here's the step. And uh, it's going to be very important to name black and not white. Yeah, because you do want to show confidence your own gold span dragon still. <laughs> yeah, I've made that mistake a couple times with Aura decks. Oh, it's like, oh, pro white. Oh, there go all my stuff. Wow, good job. There it is. There's the show confidence. Woo! So that's pretty much infinite mana. Now you... Yeah. But then again, now we're really kind of out of stuff. So, but it... I, I mean, we are at 34. I was going to say, maybe we just have enough to finish the game, but it's probably not quite there. I mean, we could try. <laughs> you know, yeah. just, uh, just, just live a little. It's sure it's possible. 
I think that's exactly what Tristan is going to try to do, is going to cast spells that allows him to live a little through the next turn and not have to combo this turn. <laughs> Fading Hope will send Rafine, the scheming seer, back, so we'll see him a little later unless we find a counter spell of sorts here for Tristan Wild LaRue, who is ever so close to clinching that spot in the World Championships. Show of confidence. I don't even know how many spells he's cast this turn, but show of confidence <laughs> will tell you that's a lot. We're yeah, going to find going. out. One more time. Yeah. Can we hit 12? Let's see if we hit 12. Oh, we're going to have 12. more than 12 triggers on the stack for sure, because all okay. these treasures come on the stack as well. Uh, so a nice 26 or so there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't break arena. It can't handle this many triggers. <laughs> oh, oh, no. This gold this card dragon is so is, good. It's so large. Look at it. Oh, that is a thick flying lizard. And, and now at this goes, point, bye bye. And now at this <laughs> point, you attack with Goldspan Dragon. Now Tristan Wild Larue is up to thirty mana. No big deal here for turn six. And now start with Expressive Iteration. See what you find. Even if you hit nothing, you play two Fable to Mirror Breakers, and you, that's not nothing, by the way. <laughs> and then you just play both these Fables. Oh my goodness me, Corey, what is this? This, this is, is Tristan Wild Larue cementing his spot at the world championship. That's this exactly looks, what this is. It looks like that. We see <laughs> a guard approach. That's another way to protect the Goldspan Dragon, who's going to get a friend on the battlefield here. And Corey Burkhardt tries. You may, my friend. You only have one card to work with right now and a High of the Eye Tyrant. I'm thinking it's almost over. I think Corey's hoping Goodness it's almost me. over. Doesn't want to deal with this anymore. <laughs> Also has the Ottawa Soaring City to yep. bounce something if he needs to. Galvanic Iteration again. What are we costing this time? That was just Nothing. to cast it because it was in the exile zone from Expressive Iteration, ah, yes. so it's in the graveyard. <laughs> 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 Dropping some nice here as a congratulations uh, to Tristan. Yep. There you go. So that is it. Tristan Wild LaRue clinches his spot in the World Championship.